Hi guys, thanks for joining me. Uh, you may remember in uh, previous videos, earlier in this month for content, uh, I was talking a little bit about uh, my plans for the season and what I was intending to do. And one of those plans was I was talking about was my service. I wanted to improve um, my ability to serve uh, so that I could serve, uh, hopefully get a few more easy points off the serve and also keep the serve tighter, make it harder to attack, so that as a return, I get returns that are easier for me to get in on. So what I want to share with you, share with you today um, is what's happened over the last month or so of my practice and some of the, mis well, some of the mistakes I've made, um, some of the things I've found um, during the course of this last month uh, along the way to getting to the point where I am now where I think I'm reasonably happy with uh, where my serve is. I don't think my serve at the moment is perfect but based on my last couple of sessions and my last couple of matches against people I now think I'm close to the point where with a little more practice it's going to do what I want it to do. Um, be a nice tight serve that wins a few points but is also very hard for my opponent to attack easily, so I should then be able to get a lot more third ball, fifth ball opportunities. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's a bit of a story, which is why I'm laughing. It's, it's been um, actually quite a frustrating month uh, along the way. There's been a lot of hiccups along the way. So um, sit down, grab a cup of coffee or tea, and I'll talk you through what, what's happened. So to start with, you remember I was I was wanted to get my serve to have those two criteria. Basically, I wanted to win more points off it. So a lot more free, easy points with my opponent hopefully making service return errors. That was one criteria. The second criteria was I wanted to be able to double bounce. You know, so the ball on the opponent's side bounces twice. I wanted to be able to double bounce my serve all the time. You know, basically at will without making mistakes. And the problem was at that time a month ago when I was talking about it was that I could double bounce my serve but I couldn't put any real spin on. And every time I tried to put some spin on the ball my serve would go off the end of the table. And obviously my opponents would then be able to attack it. And then I was on the defensive. Not such a big deal when you're a defender but if I'm going to stand up close to the table obviously that was no good. So I needed to work on this. So being the kind of person that I am, I sat down for a little bit and I thought, well, what am I going to do to try and solve this problem? And the thing that I came up with was, okay, well, I want to increase the spin on my serve and not have the pace. Um, how can I do that? Um, so I thought, well, the obvious thing is then to uh, go and try and spin the ball as hard as I can until I find the range of what works and the contact of what works and then just keep practicing it until I get better. And I started to do that. So I, I basically just turn up the table, grab the ball and try to spin it as hard as I could. And naturally enough, using my normal surface motion, when you try and spin as hard as you can, the ball goes well off the end of the table because you're putting more spin on but you're also, or at least I was, also tending to put more pace. So that didn't work so good. I thought, well, how can I, how can I get more spin but not get more speed? I thought, well, maybe instead of swinging um, forwards and downwards or forwards like that into the ball, maybe if I, I actually swung upwards and so instead of basically serving here and having my back coming and hitting the ball here, I thought maybe if I actually get my bat angled this way, so from a side on view it's kind of like, if I stand behind it just so you get the angle. So it's, it's at that angle rather than this angle here. I thought, well, I'll turn it up there. So when I serve, what I'll do is I'll actually be hitting the ball a little bit upwards instead of hitting the ball forwards. So the idea being is to take the pace off the ball and the ball will go upwards a little bit, fall onto the table and then 
and then on the other side. And I thought, well, that seems reasonable. Um, you know, it makes kind of sense. I can then spin it as much as I want. The ball's not going to go forward, it's going to go up, up, drop, and land. So I thought, well, okay, I'll give it a go. Now, what I should have done was think a little bit more at this point, but I didn't. Okay? But what I should have done is think to myself, and it's a good rule of thumb that any time you're thinking of these innovations or something that you're trying to change, think to yourself, what do the good players do? And why do they do it? Now, what I should have done at this point is I should have thought, do, any, do you see any professionals serve like that at all? Or any top players serve like that? Are there any examples of top players who, instead of serving kind of forward and down, who actually serve and come under the back of it consistently? And if I'd done that, I probably would have saved myself a lot of frustration. But I didn't. Um, and the reason why... I should have asked that question is because the answer is in fact, well no you don't. You actually very rarely see any professional serve up the back of the ball in order to get the ball to go slow. Okay. Now over the next couple of weeks I found out why. Um, I'd never really thought about it before but um, there are good reasons for that and that's what I'm going to um, share part of it with you today. So. That was what I was doing. I thought, well, okay, so I'm now going to serve up the back of the ball. And as you can imagine, the first time I tried it, this is sort of what happened. Oh, missed the ball. Well, okay, fair enough, you know. Missed it again. Now, being in that it's a new service, I was trying something new. It wasn't surprising I was completely missing the ball. Okay, that's understandable. However, if you're trying to do something new and it's that difficult that you can't even hit the ball, it's probably a good warning sign that what you're trying to do is something that's probably so tough that you're never going to quite get there and master it. Perhaps not, but that's what my, my gut instinct is. The fact that I couldn't even make contact with the ball, not even close. Um, I had 80 balls in my ball bucket. And the first session I did of this, I think I made contact about 10 times. And then the next time I tried it, I maybe got up to 20. Now, by the end of the week, you know, so after roughly five or six hours worth of trying this, you know, one hour a day, so five or six times, so more or less five or six hours, I was up to about, I think I, think I got to around about 40 out of 80. And by that I just mean contact. I don't mean great scratch serves. I just mean basically that I could hit the ball and, well, really, I could hit the ball and it would go. It wouldn't necessarily go over the table or go on and serve, it was, but I was actually making contact. That was roughly a week. So, you know, and I thought, well, I need more practice. It's off season, doesn't matter. Let's give it another week. And so I did. By the end of more or less sort of halfway through that second week, um, I was at the stage where I was actually serving, I was making contact most of the time. Okay, so I'd actually got to the stage where I didn't miss all that often, didn't miss the ball. But in terms of actually serving legal serves versus serving fault serves, I was serving around about 30 fault serves out of 80 balls. So three and eight. Okay, were faults. Of the rest, the 50 out of 80, there were probably 20 that were pretty good, and then there were another, what's that, 30 odd that were pretty mediocre, bouncing fairly high and not, not really a great, great serve. Good, pretty good spin, but, but certainly bouncing off the end of the table, not double bouncing at all. So we're, we're now down to kind of like, well, you know, sort of like 30 faults. So we're improving. Now, we're getting towards the end of the second week. And I thought, well, this, you know, okay, it's going slow, but I am making some improvement. I thought, what can I do? Is there anything I can do to keep improving faster? And I thought, well, normally I serve, and I don't, I serve and I don't really look at the ball. I look out, which is not common. I thought, well, maybe if I look at the ball, I'll serve better. 
And in matter of fact, I did serve better. What happened is I served about 20 faults out of 80 balls. So one in four. That was better. I served a few more good serves and a few less bad ones. So there, there was an improvement, okay? But certainly I still find it quite tough. And bear in mind that I'm still talking about a serve where I'm trying to spin the hell out of the ball going upwards. So it's still a, that type of motion. And this is the problem that you can see there just in those two. Two serves is a pretty good example. Both of those serve attempts there were fairly spinny. Um, I can hear the spin this. But one went straight up in the air and one went virtually straight down. And what's, what's the reason for that is the reason is that when you're trying to serve with that extreme amount of spin, a small mistake in the amount of spin that you get or a small change in your bat angle has a huge impact on where the ball goes. Okay, so what I was basically trying to do is I'm trying to do a very low percentage serve and I'm trying to master the swing so that I can replicate the swing. But every small change in bat angle coupled with a change in how well I make contact, when you're trying to go for maximum type spin, every little change has a big, big effect on the serve. And that's where I was finding I, I was really struggling, is that even though I was making reasonably good contact, the ball would go up, there, down, one would be a fault, up, there, down, one would be a fault. So I still had, I had reasonable contact consistency, but the natural little variations in my swing angle and the natural little variations of just how much grip I'd get had big, big impacts on where the ball took off. So I lost all my consistency. Now, I was down to the point here, so where I'm at is I'm at, again, about 20 faults out of 80. So one in four is a fault. Um, probably 25 to 30 are fairly nice double bounce serves. Some a bit higher, some a bit lower, some a bit shorter, some a bit longer but double bouncing, and then there's an awful lot, the rest 30 odd, going off the end of the table, one bounce serves, okay? But with reasonable spin most of, the, most of the time. So things had improved a bit, weren't perfect, but it improved a bit. And it was at this point now, about two weeks in, is I had my first training session with my regular Tuesday training partner, Colin, and I went out and I thought, well, I'll stick with this, I'll give it a go, um, and see how it goes against him. <laughs> and it didn't, it didn't go so well. Okay, um, I made a lot of, in comparison to serving here at home, where you're relaxed, there's nobody at the other end of the table, you're grabbing the ball, and what I was originally doing, was had my bucket on the table, and I grabbed the ball, and I'd serve. And I'd grab the ball and I'd serve. And I'd grab the ball and I'd serve. And I would actually just stay down low in my crouch and go, grab, serve, grab, serve, grab, serve. Now, that's a very, very different set of circumstances compared to being in a match. Now, somebody at the other end of the table, um, you're playing a point, the ball comes back to you, you come down and you serve. You play another point, get the ball, you come down, you serve. And I couldn't get the ball on the table. <laughs> I couldn't serve the ball on the table. So regardless of what I was doing in practice, in the actual game against, and this is only a training game even, but against Colin, I was lucky to get maybe, flip it around, I was getting maybe one in four serves on the table. You know, not even good, but just on the table. It's often bouncing off the end or bouncing high but I flipped the ratio around. So three quarters of my serves roughly were faults. Ah, yuck. So I wasn't too happy at that stage. Um, so I apologized to Colin and said, look, sorry, I'm trying to work this out. And um, he gave me a little bit of advice of his own saying, look, you've got to swing the arm and don't, don't just try and do it just a wrist. You've still got to swing. 
you know. And I went away and I thought about it and I thought, well, look, you know, okay, what am I doing wrong? What's, what's so terrible? And I kind of analysed and I thought, well, maybe what it is is that sometimes my elbow's up here when I'm doing the stroke and sometimes it's down there and I'm, and maybe that's contributing to why the ball's spraying all over the place because sometimes my contact is high and sometimes it's medium and sometimes it's low. So what I decided was, well, look, I'm, I'm not happy with how the ball's going up, bouncing too high. So I'll make sure I get low contact. And I'll do that by making sure that my elbow stays down low. And I'll sort of like this. And that's what I did, as I basically just did it that way. Is I kept the elbow low, threw the ball, and never lifted the elbow. And that seemed to work quite well, actually. Um, at home in practice, my serving improved, and I went down to about maybe 15 faults, you know, and a lot better serving. Uh, the ball went a lot lower, and, and I was thinking, yeah, this is good, I'm happy. Went out the next week against Colin, and thought, well, okay, here we go, I'm ready now, I'm, I'm serving a lot better. Um, all I've got to do is make sure that I keep my elbow low, and away I go, can't fail. In <laughs> Got out there against Colin, and the first thing that happened was, again, instead of being loose, you're a little bit tenser. I remember remembering the week before where I didn't serve so well. And if anything, I think I served worse this week than the week before. And I actually had one game where I started to serve, and I served two faults. Then Colin played his two serves. I served two more faults. He did his two serves. I served two more faults. He did his serves. I think by that stage we're just about the end of the game. Because I don't think I've got a point the whole game. <laughs> or maybe got a couple. But basically that whole match, that whole game, every serve I served was a fault. And I was doing this. I was keeping the elbow low. You know, and coming up the back of the ball just like I've been practicing. You know? And what would happen is I'd, I'd go on and I'd, we'd, we'd go to play the game. I'd go on, I'd serve a fault. I'd serve a fault. Would play, finish the game, and would talk between games. I'd, I'd say to Colin, "Look, all I'm trying to do is this." And I'd stand there and just go like that, and the suit would work. Yeah, no problem. It would work. And then as soon as the match started, and I did it, so it wouldn't work. Very frustrating. And again, so I, I apologised to Colin <laughs> the second time. Mm -hmm. Luckily, Colin's a very patient guy because um, he's not been getting great practice while I'm doing this, obviously, and I went away again and thought about it. And I thought to myself, well, okay, what's going on here? And second time around, what I should have thought was, look, this doesn't make sense. I'm serving upright to keep my elbow low so that I can do this. Now, nobody serves upright. Now, none of the good players stand up straight and serve like that. Everybody crouches, lifts the elbow up, and crouches down, and the elbow comes up so that your bat's in that position. Here. Never here. So, thinking about it some more, I thought, well, okay, I will do that too. I will come down, I will lift the elbow up, and I will do that serving from there. And, again, it seemed to be roughly about the same in practice. I served about 15 faults. Um, probably about, of the remaining 65 balls, about half went bad, and about half were not very good. You know, bouncing once going off the end. Now, at this point, I thought, well, that's really just the same as when I did that. So, when I go out and play Colin next time, probably exactly the same thing will happen as I'll make a complete hash of it. It's, it's the same, same in practice, it'll probably be the same in the match, it'll be crap. So... I had to think a little bit more about it. Now, at this stage, while this forehand schmozzle's been going on, I've still been working on my backhand serves um, because I, I knew I needed to. Um, I've, I've been trying to work on them. And I used to have quite good backhand serves, and I, I hadn't practiced them for a long time, and I'd kind of lost the knack of serving on the backhand. Now, Bear in mind that this is sort of two and a half to three weeks of this serving this forehand, not getting anywhere really fast. 
but within about three or four sessions of serving my backhand, easy. It was, it was easy. It was just easier to do. Um, very, very simple. And so I started to think, well, you know, why is the backhand so much simpler? Why am I finding that so easy and the forehand so hard? And what it kind of came down to was, in the end, what I was thinking about was that firstly, um, on the backhand, I didn't try to spin the hell out of the ball. And even though I wasn't trying to rip the hell out of the ball, I was still getting very nice side spin. Now, I'll, I'll do that from a front view perspective um, later on in the video so you can kind of see. But I was still getting really, really good side spin, even though I wasn't trying to sh spin the hell out of the ball. And the other thing I was doing on my backhand is I wasn't trying to come up the back of the ball. And I wasn't trying to do that serve, which is roughly what I was doing on the forehand. So instead of trying to come up this way, I was just doing my normal backhand serve that everybody does. And it's about that point where I started to really seriously question for the first time in my thing. Is this a good idea? Okay, am I trying to do the right thing? Or am I trying to do something that really, when you think about it, is silly? You know, and the more I thought about it, the more I thought, well, look, you know, your, your goal was good. You wanted more spin. You wanted to keep the ball short. You know, so the, the, the plan was good, but this method of doing it, of coming up the back of the ball to try and get this spin, doesn't work. Doesn't work for me. And the reasons it doesn't work for me is basically, firstly, um, compared to training to matches, um, you're tenser in a match, you know, you're tighter in a match. It's hard to be really, really loose in a match. Things naturally get a bit tighter. And when you're trying to depend on, like I was trying to depend on, an incredibly fast wrist snap based on snapping everything as quickly as possible, Little bit of, a little bit of tension in the wrist or the forearm, a little bit of hesitation in the swing, a little bit of being worried about whether you'll get the ball on, that kills the serve. Straight away you don't get the same amount of wrist and the serve doesn't work. Secondly, because you're coming up the back of the ball, any little change in bat angle, any slight difference in how much brush you get changes the way the ball throws up or down completely, it's very, very unforgiving. So what I've done is, I mean, okay, it's not impossible. Maybe if I had five hours a day and I sat there and practiced it, maybe I could do it. But I was doing roughly sort of like 45 minutes of forehand serving a day, four to five times a week, and, and I, I wasn't getting any better than that stage, and it was falling to pieces completely in the match. So I had to kind of think, you know, this is maybe not working. So instead I, I took those two things from the backhand of, well just, just the standard backhand serve um, without trying to rip the spin and I thought well why don't I just try that on my forehand. I've spent the last two and a half weeks learning to brush the ball. So why don't I still try and brush the ball but not try and brush the cover off the ball and instead of swinging up the back of the ball I'll just swing in my old normal service action, but I'll just try and brush it using an a easy brushing contact. Just a little tiny bit of easy wrist and an easy forearm swing, and just try and use that brushing that I've learned to s slice the ball and see how that works. And lo and behold, when I started to do that, what happened was, because I was no longer, okay, because I was no longer sliding up the back, but just doing the normal stroke, what happened was the ball stopped throwing up high, low so much, and evened out a lot more. I could still brush the ball quite well, and although I wasn't getting that super heavy spin that I was getting before, I was still getting nice spin and enough to curve the ball and also keeping it short on the table 
and it wasn't so hard to keep it short on the table because basically I can make a mistake with the contact. Now I'm nervous again. There we go. I can make a bit of a mistake with the contact and still get a successful serve. So this started to look a little bit more promising to me. And when I wrote last week on the website, when I said, oh, you know, on the front page, I'm in the middle of it and I just wanted to test it against some matches and then come back to you and start talked about it in a video. Well, that's where I was at. I was basically had decided, look, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do my crouch, I'm going to leave my elbow up, and all I'm going to be doing is just looking for, instead of that coming up back, I'm going to go to my normal motion and just focus on an easy easy brush of the ball and just change my bat angle from under to top spin to back spin and all of those are double bouncing easy 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 they're not bouncing high they're not they're not bouncing off the end of the table. There's good spin and curl on the ball. Um, and I feel like I can repeat that motion. Now, <laughs> now, only problem I've got at the moment is that over the I've done a lot of training over the last two and a half weeks before this sort of last week. Um, I did a lot of training of serve, snap, serve, snap, serve, snap. And I'm kind of fighting the instinct now after that many hours, probably about 15 hours worth of training, this, and now I've got to fight that down and say, no, it's easy, easy. And um, I'm starting to, after a week of doing it normally again, I'm starting to slowly get back to ordinary, good brush, double bounce is easy, stays like, and I'm getting good spin without and more importantly, as I tested it on the weekend, as I said, I wanted to try it out in real games, and it worked fine. It worked, it worked great. I got a few mistakes of people misreading the serve. Not many people could attack it. And the only problem I had is that I am just was still fighting a little bit that instinct to come up the back of the ball. And every time I do that at the moment, when I come up the back of the ball and accidentally do it, what happens is instead of landing the ball there, I land it towards the net instead of a fold because I'm throwing the ball a little bit further than what I need to. So really all I've got to do now is I've got the swing speed, it's a, it's a relaxed swing speed. It's not a tense, it's not a, not a hard snap, it's just a relaxed swing speed, a little bit of wrist just to get some brush and then just make sure what I've basically learned is that I didn't need to mess with my motion much, I just really needed to practice kind of brushing the ball. And again, you can see, I want to lift it. And I've just got to get rid of that from my system. And so on. Okay? So, and now I'm at the stage where I'm, I'm quite happy. The other thing that's happening is obviously because I'm using my backhand as well, the backhand serve's going quite good too. So, <laughs> as you can see, um, I've had, yeah, it's been a, a sort of a very frustrating experience the last three or four weeks. Um, mainly because, and again, it's my own fault. I, I had a plan, I thought about it, but I didn't think it through enough. And I said, yes, you know, this will, if I do this serve, what it will do is it will slow the ball down and it will let me do heavy spin and it will allow the ball to stay on the table. But I didn't account for the fact that, hey, yeah, it also means that every time I get that a little bit wrong, the ball will jump or serve a fault, dive into the net. Um, basically what would happen is, you know, if I got it right, it would go there and land, no problem. Every time I got it a bit wrong, it would either go up um, into the net and occasionally, you know, when you really get a good skin, it would kind of fall off the bat and go 
<laughs> so it, it's too hard to replicate, especially under pressure in a match. Whereas, as I said, on the weekend when I'm just doing this easy, under pressure, it's, it's just an easy swing, a little bit of wrist, get the bat angle right, and you can replicate that, or at least I can replicate that in a match against people without the nerves um, taking over and ruining my, my swing. So really, I, I should have thought of that beforehand. So there is, a, <laughs> there is a reason why the top players, the professionals, you don't see them try and serve up the back of the ball very often. And it's because, you know, it's, it's too unforgiving. The margin for error is very low. You'd have to practice a lot. I don't think even the professionals are going to serve hours and hours of serving practice a day just to, to get that kind of benefit of a slow ball with lots of spin. And again, that's what I'm also finding is that um, because now instead of serving that slow ball that sure had a lot of spin, but it gave my opponent more time to react. Once they got used to the fact that the ball wasn't coming very fast, they had a lot of time to handle it because it was travelling very slowly at them. Whereas now what's happening is it's travelling a little bit quicker at them and uh, gives them a little bit less time to react. And the depth is much more consistent using this motion. So, um, <laughs> that's my kind of my story at the moment in terms of my foibles uh, and trials and tribulations of trying to get this serve to work. So what I've got to do now is I'm still going to keep serving every day. Um, so today's like, uh, what is today? Tuesday. Yeah. So since the weekend on Sunday when I trained, I did some more practice yesterday, some more practice this morning, and I'm going to just keep practicing my serve every day, nice and easy, um, just to, to groove it in. And I've just got to get that tendency of lifting under the ball um, that I managed to train into my game, I've got to get that out of my system again. So, um, yeah, it was, it was silly. You know? It goes to show, though, it took me about two and a half weeks to develop that habit. You know, of about 45 minutes a day for four to five times a week, in about two to three weeks, I developed the habit of coming under the ball. And now I've got to train it out. So I've spent about a week so far training it out. I probably need another couple of weeks to get out of the habit of lifting it up, and then I'll, then I'll be all right. Because the basic serve I'm doing now is working quite well. Um, I'm just every so often instinctively lifting under the ball again. So what we'll do now is I think I'll just, um, uh, just grab a couple of balls, and uh, it's not so much showing you the mechanics of it, because it's really is just, it's just the same old basic serve I was using just tune with a little bit more spin. I'll just give you a front view and you can actually see um, for yourself the result of the, the basic serve. Okay, we're back again. Um, I just want to be able to show you the basic result of what I'm trying to do now uh, in terms of how well it's working for me. And I'll, I think it's probably a good idea at the same time, I'll just show you how I've been training it um, now that I'm happy with the method of my technique how I'm working on it in order to make it kind of work. Um, you can use that serving game um, to check the results. Um, that can work as well, um, but because I've been actually trying to perfect certain techniques, I've been using a slightly different method of going about it. And what I've been doing is, uh, because I wanted to get out of the habit of just standing there with a box of balls, and serving without ever straightening up or thinking about it, I wanted to make it a little bit more like a match simulation. So what I did instead was I said, okay, look, I want to slow down and I want to stand up between serves and have some time to kind of break up the rhythm of the serve so that it doesn't, I don't just get there and start just doing that, thinking that I'm doing very well, but basically just relying on the fact that I'm doing the same thing. So by having to stand up between serves, that would break up my rhythm. I also thought, well, I want to work my backhand and my forehand. So I thought, let's do both at the same time and take advantage of that. So what I do now is I have my box of balls just sitting here in a position where I can do stand comfortably for my backhand serve and come over for my forehand. And I alternate 
between a forehand serve and a backhand serve. And I have roughly three variations of forehand serve that I'm working on, and I have a couple of variations of my backhand in terms of the placement. So what I have, and the way that I do it, is that on the forehand serve, I mix up the variations. On the backhand serve, I mix up the variations. If I serve a let, so it hits the net and goes over, I repeat the serve, I do it again. Because I'm obviously pretty close to being right, but I just want to repeat it to get it right. If I do a serve and it bounces once and goes off the end of the table, I repeat it twice. Because I'm probably not far off, but I want to make sure that I get the motion correct and have a double bounce. Yeah. So I do it twice. If I serve a fault trying to do something, I've made a big mistake, so I do it again three times correctly. If one of those three times is a mistake and I serve another fault, then I'll go and do another three starting from fresh. So the idea being is that firstly I alternate between a forehand serve and a backhand serve, and then a forehand serve and then a backhand serve. So I'm constantly, I'm down, I serve. So I'll, I'll run you through it, I guess. Might as well do it while we talk. And you can see how the serves are going at the same time. So basically, I'll, I'll grab my ball and I'll say, okay, whatever serve I feel like doing on my forehand. So I'll do my forehand straight down the line serve. Get ready, get low, elbow up. And I'm just thinking to myself, easy, nice and relaxed. Double bounced, it's good. Okay, onto a backhand. Now, I now have to get out of that motion. I have to stand up, get a ball, come back down, and decide on a backhand serve. So I'll serve by curling it across towards the backhand corner. Okay, that kicks nicely, stayed low, bounced well within the end of the table. Um, I'm happy with that. Back to a forehand serve. And maybe this time what I'll do is I'll do a backspin, side spin serve, curling towards the corner. Okay, get low. Not good. Okay, good kick. Stays low. Relaxed and easy. So that all worked. Back to a backhand. And this time I'll do another one to the backhand corner, but I'll do a top spin variation. Lovely. And back to the forehand side. And maybe this time I'll do a top spin serve going to that corner. Okay, fault. Now whether I did that on purpose or not, I'll let you guess. But it was a fault. So three balls. Now <laughs> I'm a little bit lazy in that I hold all three balls. I probably shouldn't. Um, I should really do that. I do get a bit lazy with it, but this is what I should be doing is basically get the ball, serve another fault. I've still got to do it three times correctly. There we go. That's one. And two. And again, you can see I've just relaxed. Nice and easy. Oop. Bouncing once off the end of the table. I've got to repeat it twice. There's another one. So I've still got one. Okay, now I've done that. I can go back to a backhand serve. Good. onto a forehand serve and I'll do another backspin side spin towards the middle good and so on and so forth now what you're seeing is I'll just actually do a couple of serves in a row so you can just see the result of the serve that's just the basic backhand down straight down the line Backspin and side spin with a little bit of curl, nice backspin. Again, just the same. And side spin, top spin. Whereas on the backhand side, what I'm basically working on is placing everywhere, but essentially just backspin and side spin, backspin and top spin, and pure back, pretty much a pure backspin. <laughs> Again, the backhand was just 
so easy in comparison. And really all I've done is taken that easy backhand motion, which as you can see here, produces some pretty good side spin. Now there's nothing wrong with the kick going on there. It's a good kick. All I'm trying to do is just do the same thing on my forehand. Easy. There we go. Oop, miss it. Do it three times. Probably should put them in my pocket. Would be better. Down. There's some good movement. Oop, another fault. Start again. And again, it's every time I go to lift under the ball. I've trained that into my into my psyche. There we go. That's all I want. Just easy. Easy. One more. Easy. And what's happening there now is that I'm still spinning the ball. I'm trying to I'm trying to brush the ball. You know, no doubt about it. I'm not just letting it hit the bat. I'm still trying to brush. But I'm brushing it with just using an easy arm swing and just a little bit of wrist. Not up. And because I'm no longer trying to go under the ball, but I'm just really going. Just going forward instead of upwards. Just just kind of forward and down a little bit. Just a standard forehand pendulum. So just worked on the brush a bit. Um, it stays low and it doesn't go up high or anything for my opponents to attack. And once I get rid of that tendency to come under the ball um, that I've trained in, uh, it should all work pretty well. But that's what I'm doing at the moment. So it's essentially a case of so that I'm not just standing there serving, serving, serving. The idea is to serve from here, get down, serve, come up, grab a ball, get down, serve, come up, grab a ball, get down, serve. And every time I serve a let, repeat it. You serve one bouncing off the end, repeat it twice correctly. You serve a fault three times correctly and until you get it right. So that every time you make a mistake, you're repeating the correct response more often. And really all that's happened is I'm still getting, as you can see from the, res the results of the video, this easy motion is still getting very nice spin. The actual motion of straight under side spin to a top spin, it's just a little bat angle change and everywhere in between. Um, allows me to serve all the variations without making it too obvious. Now that you can't hide it, obviously. No hiding, so the bat angle just changes a little bit. Um, it's easy with the contact. I can miss hit it and it doesn't flub so much. It still goes over even with a little bit of a miss hit. And really um, all I've got to do now is spend what I was spending the last three weeks of working four to five times a week for 45 minutes on it. Now what I'm doing is just for an hour a day doing this method of always down and up. Never just standing there serving because you, you get used to the angle. This way what I've got to do is every time I make a mistake, if I make a mistake, I've got to pick up another ball, I've got to reset myself down and do it right. So I can't just serve it, oh that was wrong, grab another one, yeah. I've got to reset and start. That's much more like a match. And um, that's why I think since I've started doing that, that's helping me get better prepared for my actual match that I played on the weekend. Um, because it was more like match conditions. Um, and really this, this serve here worked very well against my opponents. Um, it's not complicated, but it's low, it's got good spin, not easy for them to attack. And uh, yeah, as I said, I, I think once I get rid of that habit of lifting up the ball now, once that goes in another couple of weeks, I think I'll have good success with it. Um, so <laughs> it's one of these stories where, yeah, it's been um, a stressful three or four weeks going about learning this probably the wrong way every time and what I really should have done and what I'd say if there's a lesson in this for anybody out there is generally don't mess with your serving action too much if you are going to change 
think carefully about what you're going to change and why you're going to change it. Um, actually, I'll just come up a bit close on him. Oh. So, yeah, just to finish, um, the moral of the story is, look, after three or four weeks of pretty intense frustration uh, on my part, I'm happy now. I'm pretty sure that I've got that sussed. It works well. Um, even after only four or five days of it, when I went to go and use it on the weekend, it worked quite well. Um, I've got a hiccup in that I've started to lift under the ball because of that habit um, of the intense practice that I did. Um, teaching myself to do it. Um, that's ingrained that habit a little bit and occasionally um, when I'm not concentrating I lift and I'm just going to have to spend the next couple of weeks doing normal, easy, easy until that becomes my habit and then I'll be okay, I'll have that out of my system. But really what I did was I managed to train in a bad habit. Um, the intention was good but the in terms of practice, I was doing the wrong thing. I was trying to train a very low margin, very low percentage success. And that's why the, you don't see the pros use it. Um, under pressure, it's too hard. Low percentage, um, every little change in bat angle, every change of brush throws the ball in totally different areas. Whereas what my normal serve motion is fine, I just really needed to concentrate on brushing the ball, learning to brush the ball again. If I had done that from the start, by now I would have spent three or four weeks um, using my normal serve with just learning to brush, and I, I would have probably by now a very, very good serve um, compared to what I had. Whereas at the moment, I'm, I'm sure I'm on the right track. I worked well on the weekend. Uh, I'm fighting some bad habits I trained in. And when I get rid of that, everything else I think will be pretty good. So uh, if you learn from nothing else from this experience is if whatever you've trained up in your serve, try and work with that and maybe just learn to brush it better, thinking on terms of brushing, but don't brush under the underneath, underneath the ball, just your normal service motion, trying to brush it more. Um, and uh, yeah, don't make big radical changes, just try and work off that. And uh, I guess, again, look at what the top players are doing, and there's usually good reasons for what they're doing, and that's what I should have done. should have thought more about why they're doing it that way. Um, and remember, you know, there's no reason why you can't be... I could have been an innovator, sure. That could have been, could have been maybe the very first person to start doing that, and it might have been um, an amazing thing. Um, but I think in terms of what I found out in that two or three weeks is that for the amount of time I can spend, which is roughly an hour a day, maybe, uh, on that serve, uh, I wasn't getting anywhere near the results I needed to be getting, and I think there's too much working against it to make it viable for me. So maybe somebody else will come along and uh, master it, and they'll, they'll be an innovator, and, and uh, well, in that case, my hat's off to them. And if it's you, my hat's off to you, but um, not for me. So, <laughs> So yes, yeah, so I'm, I'm hopefully putting the end on what's been a, a frustrating time. I'm happy though looking forward. I'm pretty sure then in another week or two of just good solid practice, I'll have the kinks out now of this serve, I've got rid of the old habits, and uh, I'm, we'll be able to look forward to getting into uh, working a little bit more on some of my rallying and a little bit more on some of my return of serve skills um, with that. So a better times ahead. Uh, and uh, yeah, so as I said, I hope you guys can learn a little bit from it. Um, I'll probably come back maybe in a month and just give you an update and just kind of try and show you how things are going with it. If I learn anything else over the course of the period, um, I may find that with more practice I can get even more spin consistently. Um, but I'll, if I learn something new, I'll come back and report uh, and, and just let you know how it goes. So again, thanks for um, bearing with me. Uh, <laughs> I hope it's uh, kind of given you a laugh as well as uh, giving you something learned yourself. I think all of us can probably use better serves. Um, I'm certainly looking forward to using these in my competition, to have better serves in my competition. And another thing, yeah, it just strikes me is that the ease in which I picked up my backhand again. Um, don't ignore your backhand serves because it's a good different angle. Uh, and also, 
I think that's an indication that you know serving is not the easiest thing in the world, but it shouldn't be so difficult that it feels um, like this kind of felt to me at times. It felt like I was really struggling, struggling. Um, it shouldn't be that hard. And I think in table tennis, a lot of things shouldn't be. If it feels that it's really, really difficult, you're probably trying to do the wrong thing. And uh, I think I kind of forgot that because now doing this thing feels very simple again, quite easy, and um, it works very well. So um, you know, I, I went away from what I knew, tried to do something clever, and uh, in the end learnt that you know, going back to your basics is probably better. So okay, enough from me. <laughs> uh, I'll wind it up there, and uh, we'll start getting into, this will probably be, I think, the last video for month four. Um, and we'll start getting into some month five videos for you uh, in the future. Uh, I've got some competitions coming up. My local pennant starts in a, another week and a half. My first tournament starts in February 12th, I think, something like that. Not very far away. And what I'll be doing is I'll try and give you, um, as an addition to the typical match stuff, um, the typical videos that I will do for you anyway, I'll try and give you guys a few more match videos. Um, as an addition, not 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 instead of the course thing, but just as additional videos describing how things are going. So I, I still want to give you seven or eight hours of course content, but as my competition goes, I'll, I'll give you some match videos as well, um, talking about how I'm finding things. Um, so they'll they'll be an addition in sort of instead of replacing course content, um, just because it's it's an interesting year. Uh, I'm doing a different style, coming to grips with it. Um, I've been finding also that my counter looping, uh, when my opponent loops the first ball, that I'm finding that I can actually counter loop a lot more often than I thought. And it's very effective. And I didn't know I could do it until I started to try it in practice. And um, with a new speed glue replacement rubbers, and suddenly I've got a new weapon. And I'm um, looking forward to using that a lot more. Um, but that's all to come. So uh, I'm going to shut up now and <laughs> leave, you guys, leave you guys to it. Uh, so yeah, but there will be um, more videos uh, coming your way very soon, getting into month five.